In this session, we will examine some issues concerning system failures and how they can be avoided in distributed system. So basically, we are going to discuss about fault tolerance and distributed systems. The topic that will be covered are component failures, system failures, synchronous versus asynchronous systems, and use of redundancy in part one. In the second part, we will discuss about fault tolerance using active replications and primary backup. And in the third part, we will discuss about agreement in faulty system. So what is a fault? So basically a fault is a malfunction, possibly caused by a design error, a manufacturing error, a programming error, a physical damage, harsh environmental conditions, unexpected inputs, operator errors, rodent eating part of it, and there are many more other causes. So faults are generally classified as transient, intermittent, and permanent faults. We will discuss in brief one by one, starting with the transient faults. Transient faults occur once and then they disappear. If the operation is repeated again, the fault goes away. For example, a bird flying through a beam of microwave transmitter may cause lost bits on some network. If this transmission times out and is retried, it will probably work the second time. What is an intermittent fault? An intermittent fault occurs and then vanishes of its own, then reappears and so on. For example, a loose contact on a connector will cause an intermittent fault. This fault causes a great deal of aggravation because they are difficult to diagnose. And finally, the permanent faults. The permanent fault is one that continues to exist until the faulty component is repaired. For example, burnout chips, software bugs and disk head crashes often causes permanent faults. Now, if some component has the probability P of malfunctioning in a given second of time, then the probability of it not failing for k consecutive seconds and then failing is P into 1 minus P to the power k. The expected time to failure is then given by the formula that is mean time to failure. So now using this well-known equation for an infinite sum starting with k equals to 1, summation of alpha to the power k equals to alpha by 1 minus alpha, substituting alpha equals to 1 minus p and differentiating both the sides of the resulting equation with respect to p and multiplying it throughout by minus p, we see that the mean time to failure equals to 1 by p. Now talking about system failure. So basically we discuss about process of faults over here. So the process of faults can be classified as fail silent faults and Byzantine faults. Fail silent faults also called as fail stop faults. With fail silent faults, a faulty processor just stops and does not respond to subsequent input or produce further output. but it announces that it is no longer functioning. With respect to Byzantine faults, a faulty processor continues to run, issuing wrong answers to questions and possibly working together maliciously with other faulty processors to give the impression that they are all working correctly, but in reality they are not. 
Undetected software bugs often exhibit Byzantine faults. So dealing with Byzantine faults is going to be much more difficult than dealing with the fail silent ones. Now about synchronous versus asynchronous systems. Suppose that we have a system in which if one processor sends a message to another, it is guaranteed to get a reply within a time t which is known in advance. So t is a time. So failure to get a reply means that the receiving system has crashed. Now this time t includes sufficient time to deal with a lost messages by sending up to n times. So in the context of research on fault tolerance, a system that has the property of always responding to a message within a known finite bound, if it is working, is said to be synchronous. A system which does not have this property is said to be a synchronous system. Now let's discuss about a redundancy. Now the general approach to fault tolerance is to make use of a redundancy. There are possibly three types of redundancies. One is information redundancy, time redundancy and physical redundancy. With information redundancy, extra bits are added to allow recovery from garbled bits. For example, a Hamming code can be added to transmit to transmitted data to recover from noise on the transmission line. With time redundancy, an action is performed and then if needed, it is performed again. Using the atomic transaction, this is possible. So if a transaction aborts, it can be redone with no harm. Time redundancy is especially helpful when the fault are transient or intermittent. Whereas with respect to physical redundancy, extra equipment is added to make it possible for the system as a whole to tolerate the loss or malfunctioning of certain components. Now in this case, with respect to physical redundancy, extra processes can be added to the system so that if a few of them crash, the system can still function properly. properly. In the second part, we will discuss more about physical redundancy.